Hello people, this is Budridge and uh, I think this will be a little shorter pay, uh, Vivaldi uh, video here uh, because I have finally figured out um, the mysteries about this well now it worked immediately here, it is very strange here on i3 but uh, to get it working all you have to do is tile this window, this picture in picture window and then you can make it floating again and then it should uh, display the picture. That's how I got it working and, and I think you only, only need to do that once and then it will work for the rest of the session and whatever, it's, it's kind of weird. Um, this video I thought we focus on uh, launching Vivaldi and also setting up some window rules for the window and also that picture in picture window and maybe other Vivaldi windows as well. Uh, it's uh, quite fast. We will not do any modifications to Vivaldi itself really in this video. Uh, maybe I should mention here I have now enabled different uh, uh, profiles here so I can this is my personal profile and then I got this tutorial profile uh, following where we were and then I have one fresh install here and I also made a fresh install of Vivaldi because I got a bit paranoid I was poking around in the settings and stuff uh, now I don't know why it moved here but it did um, found this page really quickly here Vivaldi colon slash slash Vivaldi URLs this lists out all these internal uh, hidden pages, so to speak, and you can see there's a lot of them. I was um, looking at a couple of them and found this system page here, for example, where uh, you can see all installed extensions. And some of these extensions, I haven't installed them. For example, Chrome Media Router, Google Hangouts, uh, Chromium PDF Viewer crypto token extension and that made me a bit uh, nervous you know I, I thought maybe I got some some bad stuff here so I removed all traces of Vivaldi from the computer and reinstalled it just to see what extensions you got there by default but this was still there and it's related to the web store which is also installed as a, a extension here which you need to install yeah extensions uh, and here also interesting that Vivaldi itself is installed as an ins extension but you cannot disable or remove these Google Hangouts and stuff here it's, it's kind of disgusting if you ask me uh, I searched around a bit to see if there were, were a way to disable this it, I couldn't really find a good way to do that uh, and started searching around a bit more or, or you might be able to disable this uh, to un-Google Vivaldi actually I'm not 100% sure if it's possible, but it might be, because I search for this term, uh, is Vivaldi open source? And it took me to some official document here from Vivaldi uh, detailing this. Um, Vivaldi is, uh, has made some modifications to Chromium. To allow uh, Vivaldi's custom UI, which is built with HTML, CSS, and JS JavaScript. That is uh, the UI, you know, the address bar, the status bar, and the tabs, and all that. So it is really Chrome, but a modified version of Chrome uh, to allow this uh, uh, front end UI thing, you know. And all those changes are done, done to Chromium and are available uh, as open source here uh, from this page. And then the, the UI itself is, re is written in HTML, CSS and JavaScript and uh, accessible for all who can read that. Not really sure, I haven't found good sources on this really, but it might, this is almost the most important one, you know, uh, the Chromium um, re rebuild or what to call it. So I downloaded this tarball like this extracted it it took about 10 minutes to extract this 1.5 gigabyte tarball into six uh, gigabytes of uh, source code uh, it's a it, it's uh, thousands of files here it's the whole chromium browser but there is a lot of vivaldi specific uh, stuff as well but as far as i can see this is uh, kind of open source you know uh, maybe it's not a free license and i don't think uh, you are you, you can build this and uh, uh, redistri redistribute it as your own browser. 
but uh, and I'm not even sure it is possible to build it at all. I haven't tested to do that yet since yeah it took uh, 10 minutes to extract it. It will probably take a couple of hours to build this I, I am afraid. Um, but maybe it is possible to just build this thing uh, and create your own uh, binary of Vivaldi. And if that is possible, then it should also be possible to use uh, the ungoogled Chromium patches uh, or maybe modified versions of them and get an ungoogled uh, Vivaldi, which would be really, really nice. And I don't know, I think I will keep this um, uh, extracted repository here and poke around in it from now and then and see if I can figure, figure things out, how, how they work and, and I will also take a closer look at the uh, ungoogled Chromium but I'm pretty sure that the ungoogled Chromium project uh, has uh, quite a lot of documentation and community and stuff so there's a lot of information to get uh, on what they are exactly uh, removing from, from uh, Chromium and why and where it's located and stuff so it might not be impossible, but it also might be impossible. I'm not 100% sure here, for all practical purposes. Uh, it doesn't really say that it's possible to build this at all. I, I, I don't know. But it is at least more open source than closed source. Uh, I would definitely say so, but it's not free software. Maybe. Whatever. Sidetrack. Let's get uh, started with this video now. Um, I thought let's create uh, first and foremost an i3 uh, binding to uh, toggle Vivaldi. I uh, prepared here with my i3 config and I thought let's use i3 run. Uh, we should also do this I guess. Oh no that is, yeah let's close it. We start Vivaldi uh, with Vivaldi stable, the command from the command line to start it, or Vivaldi snapshot if you're using that version. That will create a Vivaldi win window. Uh, here are the class name and the instance name. We'll copy the class name here, Vivaldi stable, for reference. Um, let's close it again. Let's create a key binding for this uh, command. Bind sum mod for f is what I like to have as my browser key binding. Uh, exec no startup id Vivaldi stable. Uh, reload i3. And uh, we can open my key notification script there and press super F. Okay, key notification script didn't work. This didn't work either. Why am um, as an input? Bind im, bind sim. Yeah, now this guy works also. Great. Okay, super F. Oh, cannot type today. No startup ID. Reload i3. Super F. Vivaldi stable. Vivaldi starts. Uh, if I press super F again. It opens a new window, and I don't like this. I would like to toggle uh, the currently open window, you know. Hide it, show it, run it if it's not existing. And I have I have mentioned it many times that I have created a, a little script that's called i3 run. And you can use it like this. You give it a class name or an instance name or something. Uh, and here we give it this Vivaldi stable, which was the class name of Vivaldi. Uh, if it cannot find that window, uh, we tell it to execute the command Vivaldi stable. Now it didn't find the window, so it will wait. It will execute the command, wait till that window exists with the window class name Vivaldi stable, and then it returns the window ID. If I execute the same i3 run command here now, it will not 
uh, create execute the command it will instead just focus the currently uh, uh, existing Vivaldi window here with Vivaldi stable uh, so I think this is a good start here for our key binding this I guess right uh, then I would also like a window rule to place uh, the browser window I like to have it my browser my main browser window I like to have it in the uh, um, C container my main container here A B C and D container and C is the same as uh, sublime here so that's my main container so to speak so I exit Vivaldi here and then we create a window rule for window uh, class equals Vivaldi stable uh, if it finds such a window exec no stop it's so stupid that you have to write this no startup id for every command uh, i3 fira move to c container and of course i3 fira i3 run that is uh, programs as uh, or scripts that's are that are available in uh, uh, i3s on my uh, github so I reload i3 now and then I press super f to execute Vivaldi and if, if everything worked now it should not uh, uh, be floating instead now it, it is placed here in the C container I press it again super f here it hides the whole container press it again it shows it that's how I like it but there's a problem now, for example, if we open preferences here or settings, that also opens in, in the same container. And any other Vivaldi window will always get uh, placed here now in the C container. Uh, I would actually rather have uh, the settings window here in the D container. And uh, I have found a good method uh, to, to achieve something like this. Let's close uh, the windows, let's close both both of them because i3 run have a special option called rename so if we instead change this to rename here uh, and then we change the search here we search for a window with a class uh, i like to call these types of windows vivaldi main that i want to place here in my main container so we search for a window with a class name vivaldi main if it doesn't find that window, then it will execute the command Vivaldi stable. Uh, and since it got the rename option, then it will wait till it finds a window with the uh, rename argument here as the class name, because that was what we were searching for. So it waits for this class name to exist. When that class name exists, it will change the class name into the class name we were searching for. So that's how rename option works. I know it, it, it looks a bit uh, uh, backwards with uh, having the, the rename argument being the actual class name and what we'd rename it to as the search term here, but kind of makes sense uh, uh, when you think about it. That's how it is. <laughs> and now if we reload uh, Vivaldi here or i3 to make our key binding have effect, we press super F. There, now it should have renamed this class here. Yes, we can see this is called Vivaldi main, but it's still uh, located here now in the C container because um, it was uh, actually called Vivaldi stable, so this rule will uh, apply. It will move, it, move the window to the C container and then rename it. Uh, uh, it's hard to, to skip that step. It is possible with some Python dirtax or whatever, but let's not get into that and we don't need that either. Um, so what I want to do here really is, is, is create a, a rule for Vivaldi main should be moved into the C container and other Vivaldi windows will have the class name Vivaldi stable. Let's move them to the D container instead. Uh, and then I think we need to put this rule first because it will always yeah I 
think so. Maybe it doesn't matter. Reload. Super F. Placed it in the C container. And now if I open uh, settings here, for example, it plays itself in the D container. And this goes for all Vivaldi windows now. So if I uh, uh, open, for example, developer tools that also have the class name Vivaldi stable. So this is a nice way and now we can always press, uh, even if we are in this window and I press super F, it will activate Vivaldi main here. So there's many, many advantages of using this method, uh, but really, especially when you're using uh, i3 FIDA or a tab layout like this. Okay, let's uh, fix that picture-in-picture picture, uh, thing also here. Let's, let's see what Angry Foreigner... The most friendly states in America are now... Tysk, man. Tysk. Picture-in-picture. Picture. Now we can see it doesn't work. But then, uh, if I tile it, now it magically works. Uh, it's super weird. And now it will work for the rest of the session. Um, but we want a window rule for this as well. And we can see this also have, um, hmm, this have Vivaldi main. It have the same class name as this window. It is some kind of a child window of, of um, uh, uh, the main window here, I assume. But we can use the title as the criteria, even if I don't like to use that, but let's do it here anyways. And then we just enter that here. Uh, it's a bit weird, but there we go. And title. Let's put that in the B container. And this will automatically tile the windows, these uh, my i3 FIDA scripts here. This may or may not work. I think it might not work here. We, we will soon see. Let's um, uh, close it and then reload i3. and then bring up a picture in picture. I think if it works, it should work immediately. Yeah, now it, it moved this guy. Um, and that wasn't what we wanted. And maybe that is completely logical. Let, let, let us see here now, if I click here, I think that when it it spawns this window, it doesn't focus this window. That is why why this happens. It uh, because i3 FIDA it just moves the the currently focused window. Uh, so all we need to do here is uh, to add a focus action before before we do anything here. So when it finds a, a window that have the title picture in picture appears the first time, focus that window. And then ex exec i3 feed here. Vivaldi, picture in picture. Boom! And now we can watch uh, YouTube videos uh, here, you know. And you can use these controls. You can even set like speed and stuff in, in this window. And then it will have effect uh, in this one. Um, and you can also set like uh, quality, you set that in, in the actual YouTube video and then that will have affected that pop-up video uh, window. Haven't really tested, but it's supposed to, to work with playlists. Yeah, let's see if we can, I got some playlists. Uh, bra grejer. I'm constantly adding things to this. This is highly recommended. Uh, Stanley, St Stanley here, and his wife makes an excellent. Um, yeah, the, these are actually called. Their name is Hicks. I just leave it at that. Yeah, now we get like next buttons here. So then you can play uh, uh, videos in in your playlists like this. It, it's kind of great, uh, actually. I, 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 I am a fan of this, uh, this uh, 
feature, I, I think. Even if uh, you should have like music and music videos and stuff, keep, try to keep them local, stream as little data as possible, you know. Uh, it's just a, a good, good habit to get. But at the same moment, I cannot have all these 1200 uh, music videos and some of them are really stupid on my hard drive, you know. Let's see, is there any anything else here that I found lately? Whatever. Ah, this of course I have to recommend my my uh, fellow Swedish uh, uh, guys here. Horizont uh, uh, will soon release a new album. Finally, one of my favorite bands. Uh, it's it's like excellent uh, hard rock, really. It's hard rock, but uh, like vintage and a bit, uh, maybe a little bit progressive. Uh, Whatever, it's it's great music, really really good music, really good musicians and 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 uh, really great uh, guys. So highly recommend that. Kind of good, uh, fifty four thousand views. That's not bad at all, I believe for this. Um, praise Thin Lizzy. Yeah, it's a bit Thin Lizzy uh, uh, um, vibe on 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 at least this song, but also uh, UFO. Things like that. Great band from. Um, uh, they are based in in Gothenburg. Okay, that was a bit off topic, uh, but uh, things like that happens, you know, on uh, the Vivaldi series. What we will do later, uh, we will not do it in this video, but we will. Instead of executing i3 run directly here, we will create a script uh, to execute Vivaldi because we will need to add a lot of things here uh, as we move on here. But right now this is this is good enough, and it's also good for my sanity, so I can now uh, focus Vivaldi with with uh, the key that I want, and it's placed in the location that I want it to be. Okay, tiling window managers is a m meme, right? I don't know. I don't know. I think tiling window managers are kind of great. And now it really shines, you know, in, in workflows. <laughs> workflows in quotation marks like this. Um, have a great day, everybody. Next video, we install uh, VB4C. Um, the most important uh, ex extension here that have a great effect or that extension uh, is driving my uh, rising direction so to speak uh, quite a lot here uh, and that's why we kind of need to install it uh, as soon as possible have a great day everybody bye